All right, welcome back, everyone. This month at Steve's is all about senior pets, and I'm thrilled to be joined by the healing vet, the amazing Dr. Edward Bassingthwaite. For years, Dr. Edward has been developing the whole energy body balance method, or the web method for short, of finding and unlocking pain, tension, trauma, even anxiety. He uses a wonderful balance of conventional and holistic care and even teaches pet parents how to help their own pets at home. So, Dr. Edward, welcome. I am so glad that you're here with us. Hey, thanks. It's a pleasure to come and hang out with you today and talk about you know old pets and how to help them be happier and healthier and all those kinds of things. I, I really appreciate it. Now, I got to join one of your free online classes recently. It was fantastic. It was eye-opening. I got a couple older dogs at home. They're both 11. So this is fascinating to me. You know, they eat well. Mm -hmm. They exercise, they live happy lives, they seem to be thriving, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they feel great all the time, right? So what exactly is silent pain? Well, silent pain is, if we're talking about physical silent pain, you have physical silent pain and emotional silent pain. So they're two kind of different things, but mm -hmm. there's similarities. Physical silent pain is soft tissue pain. Uh, or neck and back pain that's soft tissue related. I mean, if I ever get, and I'm actually speaking to a room of people, which is not so common since COVID, but mm -hmm. if I ask people just to put their hand up if they've ever kind of woken up and stretched and something's gone ping in their back and then they've been in agony. Yeah. Most hands go up, right? And our dogs have the same kinds of spinous as us, so the same kinds of things happen. But mm. the thing about soft tissue pain, no root compression, that kind of neck and back pain that's not a, like a disc prolapse or a, a fracture or something weird like that is that it doesn't show up on x-rays hmm. and dogs are incredibly good at compensating for pain for masking pain they have a a kind of a genetic imperative to hide pain from their humans because that's a survival instinct in the wild if you're out in the wild with you know dogs are not apex predators they're still hunted by other animals and if you show if you if you're if you're going around out in the wilds looking weak or, or in pain, then some of the other guys like, will pick you out. Right. That's, right. <laughs> That's so the come one. And, come and eat me. Yeah. So, yeah, it's soft tissue pain, particularly if you, if you want to get a bit technical, it's pain that is in the neurofascial tissue. So fascia is the connective tissue. Mm -hmm. Fascia is everywhere in the body. It gives every other organ in within the body its form and shape and structure from a, a cellular level up to the whole organ. It also interconnects everything. So it's like this amazing three-dimensional spider web of tissue that goes throughout the whole body. So if I'm working with a dog and I'm stretching through their paw, then that is actually affecting the whole being through that network. Hmm. And there's an incredibly large amount of nervous tissue in the fascia or connective tissues, so much so that more than half of your dog's sensory information is coming from their fascia. Wow. So silent pain is pain that builds up in the soft tissues from wear and tear, from impact injuries, from surgery, from traumas and accidents and all kinds of things mm. over the animal's life. Uh, all dogs of all ages are at, at risk from silent pain. I mean, I've had puppies as young as 16 weeks that I've had very high levels of soft tissue pain. Now, why did that happen? Did they have a, a big crash playing? Did they have a birth injury? Did they get dropped on their head by the kid that, own the mother or something you know right uh, so it's rarer in younger dogs but and it's it's inevitable in older dogs so my, nearly all older dogs by the time they get to about seven years of age will have significant levels of soft tissue pain in their bodies and the only way you can find it is to feel for it because it's only when you bring pressure into the areas that have this pain and tension that your dog will be able to go oh it hurts there that's right where it hurts. yeah so what are some signs that my buddy may be experiencing silent pain? How do how exactly do I go looking for it? You know, because you said it won't show up on imaging. I can't take him to the vet necessarily and say, hey, is he in pain anywhere? So how do um, I begin the search? Well, there there are some kind of red flags to look out for. Okay. Which some dogs will show some signs, but one of the tricky things about it is that often any signs they show are kind of small. Mm -hmm. but it can be a sign of a whole lot of pain in the system, just a little change. So um, any change in behaviour, 
So and if animals become grumpier, less social, less less wanting to play, hmm. you know, suddenly they don't want to play with their friends or they start to lift a lip or even growl or snap at other people or animals coming close to them, nearly hmm. always every just about every reactive animal that I've ever um, got my hands on has had really significant pain that's a big driver in the reactivity. Likewise with most anxious animals, mm -hmm. uh, you can nearly guarantee that every rescue animal in the world is going to have soft tissue, silent physical pain and silent emotional pain, which is more trauma and anxiety. Sure. What are other things to look for? So changes in behaviour, um, you know, not as keen to play, not wanting to play for as long, not as keen to go for walks. Mm -hmm. And another one that's really important is that, you know, I often get people come into my clinic with their with their dog and I'll be getting the story and they might say just in passing, oh, yeah, my dog doesn't want to jump on the couch anymore. It doesn't want to jump in the car anymore. Well, I could tell you, if you've ever had a dog that likes, you know, every dog in the world wants to get on the couch. I mean, come on. Right. And most dogs like to jump in the car and go for a drive. I mean, some don't. You get some that get anxiety issues. But if they stop doing that, I can 99% guarantee that it'll be because of back pain. I see. It's not just that his tastes changed. I don't like the car anymore now that I'm old and mature. No. It's more just, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really important one to look out for that people yeah. often don't attach any importance to. Right. He's uh, just getting old, doesn't feel like doing that anymore. Yeah. Right. And another one with older animals is that a lot of people have this misbelief that, that, hey, you know, this slowing, my dog getting slowed, slowing down and getting stiff, that's just normal ageing and you can't do anything about it and it's nothing to worry about. To some extent, slowing down and getting stiffer is normal ageing, but in most of the older animals I see, it's probably only 10 or 20% of that is kind of the the fascia ageing or, or whatever and, and 80 or 90% of it is soft tissue pain that once I get my hands on these dogs and we do body work with them, Mm -hmm. Well, they start doing things they haven't done for years. They start getting a whole lot more playful and engaged with their humans. I had a, an old dog come and see me um, last week for their second visit. Mm -hmm. The first visit, this old girl was like, I think I might have to bite you. I don't think I like you touching sore bits. You know, she's a dog that's known to be a bit snappy, so we had to, had to kind of work through that. And she didn't, in the end, try to bite me, but she gave me some very, gave me some warning looks like, you better be careful or I will bite you. <laughs> but the second time when she came back, you know, she was, oh, that was good. I want some more. And the, the owner was saying, well, you know, she's lying on her back and rolling around in a way that she hasn't for years all over wow. the place. So I think it's really important with older animals to know that any signs of slowing down and getting stiffer, there's often a really strong soft tissue pain component that anyone, who has two hands, mm -hmm. a loving heart, and a willingness to learn a little something, if, if you've got those things, I can teach you how to make a difference for your dog with body work in a matter of weeks or, or a month or so. It's wow. it's not hard to learn. It does take time. It does take effort, like anything you've got to learn. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it's pretty easy to learn how to find and, and heal these kind of soft tissue pain issues for your dogs. Yeah. Well... And I, I bet it would make a huge difference in their life. I mean, I can imagine you're you're getting older, you're a dog, and you are slowing down a little bit, but then you're also dealing with maybe a real bad pain back here in your back, and your owners just keep saying, oh, you're just slowing down, buddy. You don't want to get on the couch. That's fine. And then someone like you comes along and, and teaches their owner how to, just using their hands and their heart, like you said, how to erase that pain and make it go away. That is such a, just a life-changing experience for that dog. You know, you've just yeah. changed the rest of their years. And it's not only life-changing for the dog, it's life-changing for the human learning this kind of work because it it builds and deepens your relationship with your pets in really beautiful ways. Even if you've already got a great relationship, you, it gets better. Yeah. And there's, there's quite significant benefits for humans in therapeutic touch with their animal because if you're spending time with touch both the beings are getting all this release of oxytocin and these other beautiful bonding and relaxing hormones yeah. in the body so we've had a number of humans come and 
learn this work who have anxiety and trauma and have seen really lovely shifts in themselves through helping their dogs. That's unbelievable. All through, you're doing it without medications too, right? I mean, that's the really cool part. I, I'm sure there are some cases that require a little extra, but well, the method well, you're taking. When it comes to older animals, and I suppose another thing we really should talk about a little bit here is arthritis because arthritis is the other kind of condition that is very common in older animals. And even in, in yeah. younger animals, it's way more common than most people think. So arthritis is inflammatory degenerative condition of the joints. Mm -hmm. Now, that's another reason why older dogs slow down and get stiffer, but I have never met a dog with with significant arthritis who didn't have significant soft tissue pain that they needed help with too. You know, they, they're kind right. of the two things that just about every older animal is going to be impacted by as they, as they age. Mm -hmm. And with arthritis, you know, I, I will use medication, but I don't like to use medication a particularly prescription medication as a first port of call right. start off with nutraceuticals like green lip muscle and um of course a healthy whole foods diet non-anti-inflammatory diet um, mm. antioxidants all that kind of thing uh, cbd is probably the first medicine i reach for because it's incredibly safe and highly effective and doesn't just relieve pain it also helps with anxiety and gut issues and mm. incredibly good for um, dementia type issues in animals as well mm. and then you know but I, I would never want to do just medication for older animals without body work because the only way you can actually resolve pain in the soft tissues is engaging with and using therapeutic touch, which is pressure and movement, a whole range of different kinds of refined pressure and movement with the tissues. If you're not doing that, well, you, you, you'll you make the animal feel better with pain relief, but you're just masking symptoms. You're not actually getting to the root cause. And, and in my work as a holistic, or well, what I call myself these days, an intuitive, integrative veterinarian, um, if you're not getting to the root cause of things, that's really not ideal, right? Right. Now, once once all that stops working and you might add in things like rosehip vital and um, golden paste and then you move into the more veterinary type prescription drugs, you might be giving the uh, cartrophin type injections, which can be really good. Mm. And you might then be going on to non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, which there comes a point in older animals where I stop worrying too much about side effects and start thinking, you know, because it, it, your body does get older and tired and the joints wear out more and more over time. Mm -hmm. And at some point you're going to need stronger pain relief. Non-steroidals right. are the kind of main thing that vets are going to do, but there's all got so gabapentin and perhaps, um, I can't remember the name of the other one, but there's an opiate one as well. Mm. And then we've got this new drug on the market, which is a monoclonal antibody drug, Varenza, in the states or no um Parenza in australia labrella in the states which is a new drug that's out and that i would never use unless it was the last thing that we had in the toolbox because um there's been a, a significant number of dogs that have had side effects and severe injury up to and including death from that and there's a lot of vets that are that uh, I've had spoken to two people in the last two months whose animals have died after having this medication. And in both cases, the vets didn't warn of side effects at all and just said, hey, this is this new wonder drug. It'll be great for your dog. So I, I just put a little red flag out there for monoclonal antibody medicines or something that I would actively avoid in my practice. So, you know, I have also heard stories of dogs that have got months and months of extra life and activity and responded really well to them, but you really need to have a very good understanding of the risks before you make a decision on that kind of medication. Sure. Just know what you're getting into. And I feel like that's the same with most medications. Really take the time to do some research before you start them or find well, somebody you can trust. And with Labrella, um, if you look at the product insert in the US, then you go and look at the product insert in Canada, they list a whole lot of other side effects in Canada that they don't in the US. So the drug companies are a little bit, shall we say, naughty about things like this. Hmm. So I want to circle back to kind of um, 
the methods that you teach people at home, the methods that you teach people who that they can do with their own pets. Um, I, I kind of want to go back to the start. You know, okay. if I if I suspect my older dog may be in some pain or even if I don't suspect it, he's 11 years old. You've come to make me believe that maybe I should. I should expect that he's probably dealing with something. Um, where should I start? Well, I suppose the first thing that you need to do is to know that the silent pain is a thing. Mm. And it's also important to understand that there's a really big knowledge and skill gap around soft tissue pain across the board for, with everyone who's involved with pets on the planet, pretty much or well, maybe 95, 99% of people. And that includes pet guardians, that includes pet professionals of all kinds up to and including vet nurses and vet veterinarians because it's still not being taught at university. Um, and, you know, vets look at the x-ray and say, well, there's nothing wrong there, it's fine. And if you don't know that there's a problem, you don't know there's a problem. Yeah. And if you don't know how to assess for the problem, you're not going to find it. It's a particular type of palpation while reading the animal's responses. So the first thing is to become aware of it. The other, you know, we had physical silent pain. Then the other side of the coin is emotional silent pain, which is anxiety and trauma. And again, you get a lot of animals that, well, a lot of humans, that if their dog shows little glimpses of early signs of anxiety, people often die. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's nothing much to worry about. But the thing with anxiety is that it almost inevitably grows on itself over time. Mm -hmm. And then you end up two or three years down the track and suddenly you go, oh, my God, my dog's just suddenly developed full-blown anxiety. But your dog's had anxiety issues for ages right. and you just have a tweak to it, you know. For instance, really overexcitable, crazy dogs that, that are ball-obsessed and nutty, that's a kind of anxiety. It's not healthy if you've got a dog that can't switch off and relax and then you've got trauma. So, you know, there's a lot of dogs that carry significant trauma, which is, you know, physical silent pain gets locked up in the soft tissues and also gets locked up in the nervous system and the energetic systems of the animal. Mm -hmm. Then if you get an emotional trauma, then it mostly gets locked up in the, in the neurology and the energy systems, but it also gets locked up in the physical system. So one of the beautiful things about therapeutic touch is when you engage with the physical pain and tension, you're also releasing emotional um, anxiety and trauma. And I've mm -hmm. discovered that dogs with anxiety, if you give them therapeutic touch, often get really, really significant improvements in anxiety really, really quite quickly as well. Mm -hmm. But what do people, what should people do? Well, come along and and join us in our kind of movement that we have of lots and lots of beautiful humans around the world who are who are investing their, their time and their energy into learning mm -hmm. this lifelong skill that will be able to help all the pets that ever share your life from the moment they come into your life to the moment that they leave, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that, I mean, I say to people, well, you know what, you pet your pet all the time, right? So why, why don't we just repurpose some of this kind of touch that, that, has value all touch has value but if you learn some skills and you can take that touch into a therapeutic sense then every day you i say to people people who come and learn whole energy body balance never just pat their pet again you know it changes your whole relationship with the animal very very profoundly wow that's in uh, i would believe it after attending just one of your just your free introductory class i would absolutely believe that it's a, a gateway to a new almost way of life with your pet it is absolutely so so what drew you to this type of healing how did you end up where you are well that's a long story i'll see yeah how I can what quickly. excites you what excites you about this what what lights you up well seeing the changes in the animals is what lights me up and seeing the changes that other people see in their animals when they learn this work and do this work um but how I came to this was is that I I had chronic fatigue syndrome and Lyme for about 20 years. So I was extremely unwell. I couldn't work at all for maybe two or three years at the beginning of that when I was really crashed, I, you know, unable to work, unable to function. 
uh, a lot of pain and tension in my body. You know, I was flat out when I, if I was standing up and bent forward, I had, I could only just touch my knees. That's how stiff my body was. Wow. So a little bit before I become unwell, I had run into another vet who worked with horses necks and he'd take horses that had a, a fall in lameness that they'd x-rayed nerve blocks and all the diagnostics couldn't find a reason so he'd release and work with the neck and the lameness would go away so these horses had no root compression mm -hmm. and that i thought was just fascinating i started then getting my hands on every dog and cat and just saying well what what might what might happen if i start being curious about what's going on in these along these spines and right. pretty quickly found pain and tension wanted to help them there were no modalities available 28 years ago right so i just started playing with pressure and movement and pretty quickly started to find some ways to unlock the pain and tension that I was finding, which probably comes from, you know, growing up on a, on a cattle property or ranch. And, you know, you just have to find a way to make things work when you grow up in the country and you're on the land. So, but then I got really unwell and I, I experienced from the inside out what it's like to have really severe soft tissue pain, neck and back pain um, and had a lot of, high level practitioners work on me over the years and learned a hell of a lot through having other people work with my body. But I suppose the other thing is that I'm kind of on the spectrum and I get intensely focused and obsessed with things in, in a healthy way most of the time, thankfully. Uh -huh. And I just love the infinite exploration of connection and, and healing that you can unfold with your animals through touch, you know. I'm still wow. learning. Every time I get my hands on an animal, I'm learning something new. It's not it's not a thing that you you just learn it and do it like a robot with your animal. It's it's a living, growing interaction and communication and relationship that you grow with your pets through touch over time. And I gotta tell you, the first time I get my hands on dogs, most of them are going, What are you what are you touching saw bits? I don't think that should be allowed. I don't like it. But yeah nearly always by the second or third session they're coming up to you saying you know what i felt better after that it was a bit weird but i like it now i want more <laughs> right more please i love that answer though that infinite exploration of the potential of what you're doing here i, I just think well, the, and the, the other beautiful thing about the web work is that it doesn't matter if you've never done any kind of therapeutic touch you don't need any prior learning you don't need to know physiology and anatomy right all you need to do is show up and do what i show you how to do and listen to the, the theories and philosophy behind it and it's super super simple well it's it's super simple it's not actually super easy in the beginning because anything when you start it, it's going to feel awkward and strange and it's like am i doing it right am i doing it wrong but your dogs right. and cats will lead you through that they just show you they show you what they need really yeah it's 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 very much guided by the animal this work mm -hmm. so uh i would love to hear do you have a story that you like to share about a transformation that you saw on a pet yeah there's a story probably the the best the, the most impactful story i have is the story i mean i got th uh, thousands of stories that i could tell sure, about animals yeah. <laughs> changes but benny benny was a greyhound who whose mum called me up, I don't know, seven or eight years ago now, mm -hmm. and said, hey, um, I've got this this greyhound. He's got a thunder phobia. Could you come and help me out? So at that time I was doing home visits. So I drove out my little van and got in there and I said to Lisa, okay, tell me the story of Benny. He said, well, he's 12 years old, retired racing greyhound, had a long career on the track, won lots of money. He's got a thunder phobia, which is a big problem, and... Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he's just a grumpy old man who spends most of his time in his bed and he, he grumbles and complains if we watch TV past 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah. So when I first got my hands on Benny, mm -hmm. you know, I was being what I thought was gentle because I know that most greyhounds carry an incredible amount of pain and trauma in their body from racing anyway. Mm -hmm. As soon as I just started to sink in really gently, he did a big, boom, big air snap. I said, thanks, Benny. Wow. Thanks for letting me know two things. Number one, you're really painful. Number two, you're worried I'm going to hurt you. Yeah. So I reconnected and he got to an understanding that that I wasn't going to hurt him. 
he was the most one of the most painful dogs I've ever got my hands on. So he'd still be in the top ten out of all the thousands of animals I've worked with. He was just wow. screaming bundle of whole body soft tissue pain. Mm -hmm. Now his mum was shocked and horrified because she didn't know that there was a problem. So she said, "Well, what can we do?" And I said, "Well, okay, we'll do some whole energy body balance body work treatments. We'll do four a week apart. We'll do one today. And I'll come back every week." So I came back. A week later for the second one, there'd been a small but good improvement. Came back for the third one, another small but good improvement. When I came back for the fourth one, you could see Lisa was just grinning from ear to ear and really, really excited. I said, what's happening? What's happening? I said, look, you won't believe it. Benny's had a complete personality transplant, transformation. He's a different, literally a different dog. He has started playing with toys for the first time ever. We've never seen him want to play with a toy. He's, he's stealing teddy bears from our daughter's bed and taking them to his bed to cuddle up with. Again, never seen anything like this. <laughs> At night, instead of grumbling about us watching TV, he's coming around to all of us and asking for pats and attention. He's doing zoomies for the first time in years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Benny also became the world's naughtiest puppy at, at the age of 12. They've got a whole lot of other behaviours which they'd never seen before, like getting into bins and pulling everything out all over the kitchen floor, mm -hmm. uh, chewing the bottom out of a handbag to get to some Easter eggs, which thankfully didn't make him sick. You know, just a whole lot of stuff that once yeah. we removed this prison of pain and trauma that he was being constricted by, that's why he was sitting on his bed all the time and not wanting to do anything. He was... You know, I've lived with chronic pain for years and I know how much it sucks everything out of your life and you don't have anything left over to actually interact and relate and things like that. So, Benny, yeah, that that's an, another one. One of our students had a dog who had a very, very traumatic background, mm -hmm. extreme anxiety, veterinary medication didn't work, uh, also had severe allergies and gut issues, which... Veterinary medication up about 10%, but really didn't make a huge difference. It took her about two weeks to get this dog to allow her to touch him in a therapeutic sense. He was like, oh, I don't think this is good. Right. So she did lots of little bits every day, maybe half an hour and a few minutes here and there. And when after he started to go, okay, I can actually allow this touch, mm -hmm. Within about six weeks, he went from a dog that couldn't be walked because he'd go into panic and be doing backflips to being able to go out and walk. And within about six to nine months, all the gut and skin issues also healed up too. So they were more trauma, anxiety related, probably wow. at the core than anything else. So there's a couple of stories to hopefully inspire your 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 community and your tribe of people to come and and make that kind of difference for their pets. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. So you're just blowing my mind with these stories because they're such crazy transformations. That's very, very cool. It must be really, really rewarding down to just your soul level to see these happen, to see these transformations happen in these pets. Well, it's interesting that you, you say at a soul level because, you know, we've been talking about the bodywork side of things. We've got kind of two streams of skills that we teach. We have the bodywork for pets, which is very physical, hands-on, yeah, moving and releasing physical stuff out of the body. But then we also have the web energy work for animals, which is about opening up your intuitive sensory awareness and your empathic connection and using energy healing type skills with your animals. And that really then you get right into that more ephemeral soul connection with your animals in a, in a very profound way as well. Wow. That is a whole side that I have yet to explore of your uh, of your teaching and your writing. So that's uh, that's really intriguing. Well, it's cool, and you know, I was, I was working with a border collie on the other side of the planet the other day, doing the more energy based, intuitive approach. Mm -hmm. And as I moved from one energy center to another, at a distance, we could see this dog going through these big stretches and big changes in her body with purely an energy intervention across the planet, which is really cool. And mind-blowing. Yeah, that's unbelievable. So, Dr. Edward, where can people learn more from you? you come along to www.wholeenergybodybalance.com. Um, you can also look for Dr. Edward or The Healing Vet on Facebook is probably our kind of main social place that I hang out and post stuff. 
Uh, you can also come to thehealingvet.com. So I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions via Zoom. Um, I work with a lot of people all around the world, whether it be for chronic health issues or anxiety issues, behavior and training, uh, helping people with end of life or with resolving end of life stuff after the animal has transitioned. Mm. There's a whole lot of stuff that I help people with all around the world. That's very cool. Well, I appreciate that you're out there doing all this. Thank you so much. You're um, welcome. Thank you again for joining us, Dr. Edward. I am excited to see where your research takes you next. Um, this is really an exciting time for our pets. And I want to thank all of you so much for joining us. I hope that you learned some great info to help improve your lives, uh, pets' lives at home. Remember to join us near the end of the month for our upcoming webinars in raw food safety. We're going to discuss all of the common concerns about feeding a raw food. Then you get to follow some of our ingredients from farm to bowl to see how it all comes together. So that's one of my favorites. Um, mm -hmm. And then at the end of the month, we're going to be presenting our webinar, Seniors Living Their Best Lives. Um, you can register for that on the Steve's Facebook page. I'll also toss it in the uh, in the comments here. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you again, Dr. Edward. Have a great day. Go give your dog a belly rub. Take some time to play with your cat, and we will see you soon. Beautiful. Thanks for having me.